Uh, this is our InnerWorks version instance where we've been playing around with and setting up a demo. Um, this is the home screen where you can see all your answers and live boards uh, for today since we're focused on the data management portion. I'm gonna go directly to this data tab over here and we're gonna just get it right into it and kind of, kind of do some of the things that we were talking about earlier. So you'll wanna click, if you're just getting started in, in uh, ThoughtSpot, getting your data in, you'll wanna hit create new connection. You'll wanna name your connection maybe provide a description, like say, hey, if you wanna come here, like, yeah, uh, like Snowflake connector, you can continue, you can put in your uh, credentials here. So bear with me as I put mine in. what I had. So you'll look up you'll look up the schema that you want or the tables that you want. For today's purpose, I'm just gonna grab a couple, make sure that things move relatively quickly, not spending too long here. I'm gonna grab a fact table or some sales data that I've brought in, some sample sales data. I'm gonna grab a product table and then I'll grab a gym sales territory over here. And we'll create that connection. So so it'll ask you, hey, confirm. And once this code, once this goes through, we'll be able to see we'll have the data, we'll have the data connection part of our building blocks in the bottom created. And also we have brought in the tables as well. And and, and when I say brought in, I should clarify that it's we're not actually like we're not creating it, we're not creating an export of any kind, we're not creating an extract, but we're just creating that connection. So we can see. I click into this table. These are the column names that people have, uh, that have been, these are the column names of the table. This is the description. This is the data type. ThoughtSpot automatically assigns something as a measure or an attribute here. And there's a bunch of just different fields here. You can choose the default aggregation, whether it's hidden to end users or not. Synonyms is a very important where, excuse me, for something like, let's say, let's say something like a product name, you could, excuse me, uh, for something like product name, you might put a synonym for it for like item name instead, where someone, like it might be interchangeable. And so when your end users are searching for it, they can still find what they're looking for, the column that they're looking for. We can see the joins here. We don't have any joins set up, but we'll get to that momentarily. They'll show you some data samples. Um, and then the row security, which we'll get into at the very end as well. But for just for now, we're gonna join this one fact table with the two other dim tables that we had, where we're gonna to join to dim product on the uh, product key over here, perfect, in a many to one join, and then we'll select product key on this side. And then create the join. And, and ThoughtSpot will show you how it looks. And then we're just gonna add one more join over here. So the second table was dim sales territory. I'm gonna search it up, sales territory key, sales territory key, and a many to one. Create the join. And we now have a very simple data model set up. And so I think just the last thing uh, we're not going to show, I don't know if we're going to show any answers or live boards right now, but I'm just going to, we're going to show the row security at least. Where with the row security, I had previously set up a, a demo user for today's workshop where I've assigned the demo user the North America group. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to write in some row level security. We're going to put in, um, put in this formula. We're gonna call this sales territory rule. We're gonna write in sales territory group is equal to exactly like what we were show, what we were talking about earlier in our example and thought spot group. And so now if in the column the sales territory group, if it says if it says North America, 
then and then the sale is relevant to the North American like team, then because my demo user is also in the North America group, then it'll return true, and then they'll be able to see just those rows. And if the if actually the sale happened in Europe, because this because this demo user isn't in Europe, they're not assigned to the group in Europe, they won't see that uh, record in the data. And so that's effectively how the rule level security works. You could have many rules, but as long as any one of the following rules are met, then they will be granted access to that record. And so that is the end of our, that is more or less the end of what I had planned. Was there anything else we wanted to show today, Maxwell? So you know how I talked about that sanity check earlier with our data? Yeah. How might I see that here? Because I know if I was in a reporting tool like Tableau or something, uh, whenever I look at the data pane, I can look at how many rows of data have come in. Yeah. Is there a way to see that here in ThoughtSpot? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a look. Well, this is the number of uh, this is the number of columns, twenty six columns over here. Um, generally, the way that I've been doing it, let's take a look. I feel like there's a place in the metadata, but this I know this is the sample. So, but generally, the way that I do it is probably to create a worksheet and then yeah, search how many like rows came in. Low. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know that makes I, total sense. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to see it. But you answered my question. I I really like being able to see how this is set up, and it's pretty intuitive as to how to look at the different sheets, do the join, and also the row level security. I, I like how it's built in, and there's actually a tab for it because in some other reporting softwares, that's not the case. You have to be more of a I don't want to say an expert, but you have to know how to create all those different calculations, where to put them in the software, while here, there's a tab for it, and it's ready to go. So I think that that's a really cool feature as well. Um, also, if you could click back on the join. Yeah, let me go back to the fact table, actually. Um, join over here. Yeah, so I like how this diagram is also being shown. So let's say that... Um, I want to edit some of these and change, let's say instead of being many to one, I want a uh, many to many relationship or something else. Is that quick and easy to do here? Yeah, yeah. Um, you hit the, I don't know if you can't do it here, but there's the little pencil over here. You click the edit and you oh, change like a many to one, one to one, the join type. Um, and then it says like to change the columns, you need to delete it and recreate the join. But that's generally not a problem, pretty quick. That's great. Um, yeah, I really like this, especially for a user that has been, let's say, like Tableau heavy for so long. I, I know that trying to teach that to people, sometimes they get confused, but I feel like this interface is pretty straightforward. So uh, thank you for showing that to us, Linus. For sure.